Hey guys, a few months ago I made a video about my Notion setup and so I thought I would make a follow-up just to show you what has changed since then as well as go over the general guide on all the things you can add to Notion and how to add them. We'll be going over things like shortcuts and helpful tips as well as databases, widgets, and a lot more. And I want to add here that Notion has kindly decided to sponsor today's video. However, everything I say in this video is my genuine, honest thoughts about the app. First off, what is Notion and why do we even need it in the first place? So Notion is basically an online space for people to store anything they want in the form of databases. It's available as a website as well as an iOS and also a web app. And people basically use it for anything from school to wedding planning to even D&D campaigns. And personally, I use it to store all my school materials in one place. I use it for writing YouTube ideas, keeping track of my video schedule. Basically, anything that I feel the need to digitally organize, I'll probably do it somehow on Notion. Okay, so now you have the app and you're like, what do I do now? First, you're going to want to create a page, which will be the building block from which everything in Notion is basically built on. And while you can definitely start with a blank page and just go from there, I highly recommend when you're starting out to go to the templates that Notion has pre-made into their workspace. And then you can easily just duplicate and then change up and customize their templates however you like. And you can also just take individual blocks that you might like from their templates and just use those individually. And their templates are also nice because a lot of the times they will have descriptions on how to use each template as well as certain little details that tell you what each part of the template does and kind of explains how it works. So here as an example, I'm just taking their life wiki template and changing things like the title, the icon in the background, as well as playing around with the formatting of the blocks a bit. And basically the templates are just a very good foundation to get started with and start ideas about what you want to make. Now with either your blank page or your, or your template at hand, here are some very useful formatting and basic shortcuts that will really help you when you're making your Notion. So Notion uses something called slash commands that f sadly do not work if you're editing this on, the, on your mobile app, but it does work very well on the computer. And I'll definitely be linking a complete PDF or picture of the full list of slash commands that work in Notion. One way slash commands are really useful is that they can quickly change the type of block that you're currently typing on. So for example, if I were to type slash box and then click enter, the block would immediately turn into a checkbox type of block. If you hover over any of the blocks on the left, you can see six dots appear and then you can use that to drag and move around these blocks. To change the block style, you can click on the dots and then turn them into a different block or you can just type slash turn into and then whatever other block that you want it to turn into and that works as well. And you can also do things like slash BAC and then a color to turn the background color of a block, whatever color that they have. And also there's no slash command for this, but you can also just highlight the text itself and then highlight the text only part of the block, which looks a bit different. And if you ever want to put a space between two blocks, you just gotta find an empty line and drag it between whatever two blocks you want the space to be. And so here I'm doing slash table to create a table block, which is one of my favorite and in my opinion, the most useful parts of Notion. And basically a table is a type of database that you can use to sort related things such as assignments for school. And so the useful thing about tables is that there's lots of very helpful properties that you can assign to each thing that you add into your database, such as here for assignment one, I am adding a date property, which allows me to create a due date. And within that due date, I can also set an alert so that Notion on my phone will send me a notification, which is especially useful in university, I feel like, because there's honestly so many things to keep track of that a physical planner, no matter how much I write down the due date, is not going to stick in my long-term memory, and I'm probably going to forget something if I didn't have notifications. So this is very, very useful for school. It's also very useful to add a type property, so then you can sort your many, many different things that you put in your database by category. So here I'm making three different categories, homework, exam, and team projects. 
that I can then sort everything that has to do with one course by these three different categories and changing the view to a board view which is very useful if you were to sort your things by finish not finish and in progress a lot of people like to use it as a kanban board so you can drag and drop objects into their different categories as you finish complete them one by one and then here's another one of my favorite views which is the timeline view which makes it very easy to see the due dates in a visual calendar like format it's easier to see which ones are more of higher priority in relation to the current date next here i'm typing slash call to create a call out box which is another really pretty one that you can use to write a quick reminder or a quote and here is a slash code block of code that you can just use to insert a block of html or c plus plus or whatever which has been really useful for me when i'm taking notes for my comp site class it's been an actual lifesaver just to be able to copy and paste blocks of code that I've written or that I've seen in my lab. And outside of the actual coding purposes, I think it just looks really nice for diversifying and changing up the look of your pages a little bit with a pop of color and also a slightly different font which actually is a pretty good segue into my next point which is the page font which is probably one of my least favorite parts of notion in that there are only three different types of font you can choose which will then be applied to every single text block in the entire page however if you really do want aesthetic fonts in your notion for your titles especially you can just go to a font generator and just type your titles into there and then copy paste them back into notion while this might be a bit annoying, it's really the only workaround that doesn't involve really serious messing with the coding inside Notion, and it's still probably the easiest way to just diversify your fonts until they add more choices, maybe in the future. Oh, and here, I talked about it a bit earlier, but I didn't show it, so, so you can make the text bigger or smaller in three different sizes by typing slash turn and then h1 h2 or h3 depending on what header you decide to use by typing slash col and then whatever color you want to turn it into you can also change the font color although again it's limited um the number of colors that you can choose from another block that i will commonly use in my pages is a page block which creates a nested page within the page that you're currently in which can sound kind of confusing but basically it's just if you think about it like a placing a paper inside a folder that's basically just makes the original page a type of folder to hold the new page and i think basically you can if you really wanted you could probably nest them infinitely but i don't know why you would want to do that nested pages are pretty useful for if you want to group a lot of similarly related pages together as well as kind of clean up the clutter of your sidebar after you start making a lot of pages a good example of this would be the home dashboard that a lot of people like to use where they will put every one of their most used pages inside the dashboard page itself that way in order to access all the pages all they have to do is just go to the dashboard where they can see and go to any of the other pages easily and for the next part i'll be explaining how gifs work in notion so to embed a gif directly into your page itself all you do is go to jiffy click copy link address paste the link into notion wherever you want and then go to where it says embed and click the embed button which will then put the gif right in your page and do be aware that the more gifs you add into your page the longer the page will take to load it's just something to keep in mind and then you can also change the size and slightly move it around with some limitations for stickers on jiffy they basically work the same way the only difference is that they have a transparent background which for some reason sometimes doesn't show up as well if you embed it into the page but they work really well as icons which i will now show so for icons the only difference is that you want to get the image address this time not the link address and then so you click on the icon and then you go to the link and then it'll ask you for an image link which you paste right there and it should change it right there there we go and then you can also do this for the background it's the same thing as the icon you find 
a GIF that you want to use and then you get the image address and then you paste it where they ask you for the link. The only thing to keep in mind here is that the GIFs you find are usually going to be a lot smaller in size than the cover of, on Notion, so it'll end up making the GIF look very pixelated for most GIFs you find, unless you manage to find like a very HD quality GIF. So that's why in general I tend to just use images for my backgrounds. Other than GIFs, you can also embed YouTube videos simply by copying and pasting the YouTube link for the video and then clicking embed video and then you can actually play the whole video inside Notion itself, which is great if you want to have playlist links. Although I am not sure, to be honest, I haven't tested what's like the maximum video length you can embed into Notion, but if any of you have done that, please comment below if there is a limit. I don't even know if there is, to be honest. Either way, I personally like it better than embedding the Spotify playlists into Notion. Even though Spotify playlists look really nice when they're on your Notion page, a lot of songs either like, skip after 30 seconds because of the way Spotify has its copyright thing with Notion, or they just don't play at all for some reason, even if you embed it correctly in Notion. So I just don't bother with Spotify at all. I do know you can embed the Apple Music playlist, but I don't really know the details of how they work in Notion. And so now that we talked about basically everything that I put into Notion itself, now let's talk about some tips for effective Notioning. First off, although nesting pages within pages is very useful for keeping your sidebar more clean and easy to manage, and at some point it's easy to access similar pages if they're all together on one big main page. The downside to nesting pages is that the more you nest a page, um, the harder it can become to access. So if you were to nest a page within a page within a page within a page, it would eventually become that you'd probably just not use it as much just because it's harder to access and you'll see it less often. So that's something to keep in mind. As for community resources and inspiration, Pinterest and Reddit are usually my two go-to communities for Notion. While Pinterest serves as a great visual inspiration, just seeing other people's layouts, the Notion page on Reddit is my favorite resource in general just because it has so many useful tips and guides as well as very advanced widgets and databases that you can take inspiration from as well as duplicate and add to your own databases and if you ever have a specific question that you're unsure of how to do something on notion or you're having trouble configuring or embedding a certain thing in notion you can easily shoot a question to the community on reddit and have it answered fairly quickly because the community on reddit is pretty active i would say Whereas for Pinterest, it's really just a one-way street of inspiration. A useful tip for taking lectures on Notion is that you can split screen and have your Notion tab open on one side and your lecture open on the other. And whenever your professor or the slide has a useful diagram, you can easily just do shift command four or whatever screenshot shortcut is on your computer and then just screenshot at the image and then directly drag it into Notion. And to end up the video, I'll basically be talking about the one main thing that I have added since the last video, which is a course page template that I'll have linked below. And basically this template has everything that you'll need for any classes or courses. It's specifically tailored towards university just because I'm in university, but I feel like if you're in high school, you can also easily use it for that as well. While I definitely did not cover everything that Notion has to offer in this video, I tried to go over the things that I use the most personally, just because that's the things that I know how to talk about most but there's definitely a lot more to explore, so I highly recommend you try it out and fiddle with stuff yourself to see how you would use Notion the best. 
And yeah, if you have any tips or questions, um, I will try my best to answer them below. But other than that, I'll see you guys in the next video and stay safe and stay warm.